this is RT, international news, 24 hours a day. Welcome to the programme. Now, fresh explosions and gunfire have been heard in the Libyan capital, Tripoli, with reports saying coalition forces are targeting major military facilities across the country. Allied forces have also conducted airstrikes against troops loyal to the leader, Muammar Gaddafi, in the country's western city of Musrata. RT's Paula Slayer has the latest from Tripoli. Well, what we're noticing more and more is that the momentum for this operation in Libya remains in the balance. It's literally hanging in the balance because on the international front, we're seeing that coalition forces are now not agreeing in terms of how to move forward. Here on the ground, the rebel groups themselves are divided in terms of how they want to move forward. And even now here in the capital city of Tripoli, which is traditionally the stronghold of Muammar Gaddafi, we are hearing preliminary reports of some of his former supporters starting to meet in secret. Now, from the coalition airstrikes and from the coalition community we know that for six days these airstrikes have been happening overnight and into the early hours of this morning we are being told that they hit military bases around the country but a different story emerging as it always does from the capital city here we've been told that a number of civilians have been killed and injured one of the towns that the coalition hit according to them was the town of Masrata and they insisting that they've managed to stem the government force advancement there but we are hearing conflicting reports some of those reports suggesting that for days now, the town has been unable to have access to water, fuel and electricity, that Gaddafi soldiers are literally going from house to house, that they've hit the local hospital. Here in Tripoli in the early hours of this morning and for several hours afterwards there were loud explosions, there was also anti-aircraft gunfire exploding in the sky, so Tripoli again coming under intensive fire overnight. Now the coalition has insisted that the airstrikes have been successful, it says that Gaddafi's air capability has been completely wiped out. He is denying this. He says that he has air capability to continue for some time to come. The rebels themselves are now starting to find themselves in an incredibly difficult position. They are calling on the international community for some kind of preemptive strikes as they try to advance forward. The stalemate on the ground is that the rebels do not have the weaponry, they do not have the rank and command structure, and they certainly do not have the experience to take on Gaddafi soldiers. But those soldiers in turn do not have the numbers. So you have this situation on the ground where neither group is able to actually move forward and advance. Artist Paula Slayer, who we've uh, just seen there reporting from the country's capital, Tripoli, is keeping across developments in Libya for you. You can log on to our website, rt.com, where you can find Paula's blog. She delivers the latest updates and shares her own experiences of the conflict. You can also check out RT's Facebook and Twitter feeds and give your views on the situation currently unfolding in Libya. European leaders are gathering in Brussels for a two-day summit with a situation in Libya expected to dominate talks. It comes as NATO members fail to determine who should be responsible for overseeing the military operation in Libya. Let's uh, cross live now to Artis Daniel Bushel, who's in Brussels. Uh, Daniel, what can we expect from this summit? Well, we can expect that it's going to be fiery because really the mood is descending into chaos here in Brussels. As you say, the EU is meeting after NATO failed to come to an agreement which side would lead. America, the US, is doing everything to pull out of leadership of this campaign with its history in Iraq and other places. But others are failing to step into the breach and that is leading to real serious complications. Norway has said it's pulling out its, uh, its troops because of a lack of leadership. Turkey, a key Arab ally and also part of the Western defence structure says that uh, there should be no civilian casualties and the reports of civilian casualties in Libya is completely unacceptable. Statements by several sides in the NATO alliance, UK, US, that Colonel Gaddafi is the target rather than humanitarian assistance is, is really at the centre of this uh, controversy. Uh, several states feel they've been duped. The initial UN vote was for an imposition of a no-fly zone. And now we're seeing uh, Gaddafi being targeted, uh, talk of more troops being sent in. So there's a real sense of uh, chaos here in Brussels. And UN will also meet today in an attempt to find leadership in what is uh, rapidly developing into a very difficult situation for the Western allies. 
Okay, Daniel Bristol for now in Brussels. Thank you. Well, NATO members are split over the future of the military campaign in Libya. So says Michael Hoffman, author and political researcher. There seems to be quite a rivalry between uh, David Cameron and Nicolas Sarkozy. And then Turkey is also dissenting because the Turks have already said that uh, all they want is a no-fly zone, nothing more than that. The Germans are now stating that they are removing their navy from NATO control. This seems like and appears to be another type of imperialism. It has to be seen that way in the Arab world. It can't be about protecting people. I reject that rationale because where are the people being protected in Bahrain? Where is the no-fly zone in Gaza? There are all kinds of areas in the world where the United States, NATO, the UN, uh, the Arab League could intervene, and they are not. Well, Western powers have always seen Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi as a danger to their interests in the Arab world. That's according to Vitaly Naumkin, an expert in international relations. We'll get more of his views in about 20 minutes' time, but uh, here's a quick taster. It was unacceptable to leave such a, an unpredictable leader, not friendly to the West, and uh, there was a sort of also a feeling of revenge to what he uh, has done to the Western states. And there were pragmatic considerations to have more friendly regime in Libya, along with, uh, on this seashore, along with Tunisia, Egypt. He was presenting some alternative to the global uh, paradigm of uh, systems to the main liberal uh, Western type of society and regimes. It was some alternative, and this alternative was detrimental to the interests of the promotion of this liberal type of democracy in the Arab world.